Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Live Law's special series on the 100 crucial judgments delivered by the Supreme Court in 2023. I am Urvashi Chahan, your host bringing you part 4 of this special series. With this last part, let us continue to explore the landmark rulings and uncover the profound impact they have on our legal landscape. Starting with the case of Pradyuman Bisht versus Union of India, where the Supreme Court issued a slew of directions to ensure safety within court premises in light of the incidents of gun firing within court premises in the national capital, stressing on the need to preserve the sanctity of the court. The court also said that the incidents of violence had disturbed it to no end. The division bench of Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt and Justice Dipankar Datta stressed on the need to take immediate measures, stating that the safety and security of the stakeholders in the judicial process was non-negotiable. Next is the case of Salib versus State of UP. In this case, the Supreme Court bench comprising Justices B. R. Gawai and J. B. Pardewala while quashing a criminal FIR observed that in cases where the quashing of FIR is sought, essentially on the ground that the proceedings are based on ulterior motive for wrecking personal vengeance, then in such circumstances, the court owes a duty to look into the FIR with care and a little more closely. In the case titled Devesh Sharma vs Union of India, the Supreme Court upheld decision of the Rajasthan High Court which had made B.Ed degree holders ineligible for appointment to the post of primary school teachers. The bench comprising Justice Anirudh Bose and Justice Sudhanshu Dholia opined that the fundamental right of primary education in India as guaranteed under Article 21A of the Constitution as well as the Right to Education Act not just included free and compulsory education for children below 14 years of age, but also included quality education to be imparted in such children. Coming to the case of Ivar Asan versus Superintendent of Police, upholding the fundamental right of person to choose a life partner, the Supreme Court bench comprising Justices S. Ravindra Bhatt and Arvind Kumar overruled a Madras High Court judgment which held that the marriages performed in the offices of advocates are not valid as per the Hindu Marriage Act of 1955. In another important case, the Supreme Court ruled that the interest income earned on fixed deposits made by clubs in the banks that are members of those clubs has to be treated like any other income from other sources within the meaning of Section 224 of Income Tax Act of 1961. The bench of justices B. V. Nagratna and Prashant Kumar Mishra in this case titled Sekandrabad Club vs. CIT said that the principle of mutuality would not apply to interest income earned on FDs made by clubs in the banks irrespective of whether the banks are corporate members of the club or not. In the case titled Kavita Yadav vs. Secretary Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, the Supreme Court held that maternity benefits have to be granted even if the period of benefit overshoots the term of contractual employment. Maternity benefits can travel beyond the term of contractual employment. The court here directed the employer to pay maternity benefits as would have been available in terms of Section 5 and 8 of the Maternity Benefits Act 1961 and payment to be made within three months. The court underlined that the statute itself envisions the continuation of benefits beyond the term of employment, asserting that entitlement to medical benefits as stipulated under Section 5 of the Act goes beyond the confines of employment duration. The Supreme Court in the case Kishan Chand Jain versus Union of India directed the Central Information Commission and the State Information Commissions to ensure proper implementation of the mandate of Section 4 of Right to Information Act. The bench of CGI D.Y. Chandrachud and Justices P.S. Narsimha and J.B. Pardewala observed that while declaring that all citizens shall have the right to information under Section 3 of the Act, the correlative duty in the form of an obligation of public authorities is recognized in Section 4. 
Now coming to the case of Bachpan Bachao Andolan versus Union of India. Here, the Supreme Court passed an order relating to appointment of support persons under the POCSO Act and their qualifications. The court issued directions for framing guidelines on their appointment. Let me tell you, a support person is to provide information, emotional and psychological support and practical assistance which are often crucial to the recovery of the child in such cases. A notable judgment was pronounced by the Supreme Court in the case of Rajo versus State of Bihar. It explained the factors which a government should take into account while deciding to grant remission of sentence to convicts as per section 432 of CRPC. The court observed that the government should also take into account factors such as age, health, familial relationships, reintegration possibilities, extent of earned remission and post-conviction conduct. Next is the case of Rivana Siddhappa versus Malikarjun. The Supreme Court pronounced a judgment recognizing rights of children born out of invalid marriages in their parents' share in Hindu joint family property. The court held that children born out of void or voidable marriages are entitled to inherit a share in the property of their deceased parents which would have been allotted to them on a notional partition of the Hindu coparcenary property. However, such children are not entitled to the properties of any co-parsoner other than their parents. The court clarified that this ruling is applicable only to Hindu joint family properties governed by Hindu Mitakshara law. Now coming to the case titled Central Bureau of Investigation vs. Dr. R. R. Kishore. In this judgment, a constitution bench of the Supreme Court declared that its 2014 judgment, which declared Section 6A of Delhi Special Police Establishment Act or the DSPE Act as unconstitutional, will have retrospective effect. This means that Section 6A is held to not be in force right from the date of its insertion. Section 6A of the DSPE Act required CBI to obtain prior sanction from the central government to investigate corruption cases against an officer of the rank of Joint Secretary and above. This provision was struck down as unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in Subramanian Swami v. Union of India. In a significant judgment that reaffirms the principles of upholding the dignity, rights and well-being of armed forces personnel, the Supreme Court ruled in favour of a retired air veteran holding the Indian Air Force and the Indian Army jointly and vicariously liable for medical negligence. The appellant who contracted HIV during a blood transfusion at a military hospital while falling sick on duty during Operation Parakram was awarded compensation amounting to 1 crore 54 lakhs 73,000. The title of the case is CPL Ashish Kumar Chahan versus Commanding Officer and others. And the bench here comprised Justices S. Ravindra Bhatt and Dipankar Tatta. In the case of Pankaj Bansal versus Union of India, the Supreme Court ruled that a person cannot be arrested by Directorate of Enforcement for mere non-cooperation in response to a summons issued under Section 50 of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The bench in the matter comprised Justices A.S. Bopanna and P.V. Sanjay Kumar. And now coming to a very important case, that is Supriyo versus Union of India. A five-judge bench of the Supreme Court on 17th October last year refused to grant legal recognition for queer marriages in India, saying that it is a matter for the legislature to decide. However, all the judges on the bench agreed that the Union of India, as per its earlier statement, shall constitute a committee to examine the rights and entitlements of persons in the queer union without legal recognition of their relationship as a marriage. The court also unanimously held that queer couples have the right to cohabit without any threat of violence, coercion or interference, but it refrained from passing any directions to formally recognize such relationships as marriages. In the case of Dr. Balram Singh versus Union of India, the Supreme Court has issued a slew of directions to the Union and the state governments to ensure that the abhorrent practice of manual scavenging is totally put to an end by strict implementation 
of the Prohibition of Employment as Manual Scavengers and their Rehabilitation Act 2013. The court directed that the process of manual cleaning of sewers be completely eradicated and to ensure that no individual has to manually enter sewers for any purpose. Expressing serious concerns at the pendency of cases in the country, the Supreme Court bench comprising Justice Ravindra Bhatt and Justice Arvind Kumar in the case of Yashpal Jain versus Sushila Devi and others issued 11 directions to the high courts to ensure speedy trial and to monitor disposal of cases, especially those pending for over five years. Coming to the matter of Pavana Debur versus the Directorate of Enforcement. In this significant judgment, the Supreme Court clarified that an offence of criminal conspiracy punishable under Section 120B of IPC will be deemed a scheduled offence under the PMLA only if the alleged conspiracy is directed towards committing an offence specifically included in the schedule of PMLA. The judgment clarified that a person unconnected to the scheduled offence but knowingly assisting in the concealment of the proceeds of crime can be held guilty of committing an offence under Section 3 of the PMLA. The Supreme Court bench comprising Justice B.V. Nagratna and Justice Ujjal Bhuya in the case of Priya Indoria versus State of Karnataka held that the Sessions Court or High Court would have the power to grant interim or transit anticipatory bail when the FIR is not registered within the territory of a particular state but in a different state. Another significant judgment was from the Constitution Bench of the Supreme Court, which in December upheld validity of Union Government's 2019 decision to repeal the special status of Jammu and Kashmir under Article 370 of the Constitution. The court held that the state of JNK had no internal sovereignty and the concurrence of the state government was not required to apply the Indian Constitution to the state of JNK. It was held that Article 370 was a temporary provision. A seven-judge bench of the Supreme Court ruled that arbitration clauses in unstamped or inadequately stamped agreements are enforceable. Insufficiency of stamping does not make the agreement void or unenforceable but makes it inadmissible in evidence. However, the court pointed out that it is a curable defect as per the Indian Stamp Act. With this, the court overruled the judgment rendered by a five-judge bench in April last year in NN Global Mercantile Private Limited versus Indo Unique Flame Limited and others, which had by a three is to two majority held that unstamped arbitration agreements are not enforceable. Another constitution bench of the Supreme Court held that an arbitration agreement can bind non-signatories as per the group of companies doctrine. The group of companies doctrine must be retained in the Indian arbitration jurisprudence considering its utility in determining the intention of the parties in context of complex transactions involving multiple parties and multiple agreements. A bench comprising Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandra Chood, Justices Rishikesh Roy, P.S. Narsimha, J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra delivered the verdict. In an important judgment, the Supreme Court upheld constitutionality of provisions of insolvency and bankruptcy code relating to personal guarantors insolvency resolution which were introduced through the amendments made in 2019. The court held that these provisions cannot be held as unconstitutional for not affording an opportunity of hearing to the personal guarantors before the insolvency petition filed by creditors is admitted against them and the moratorium is automatically applied against them as soon as the insolvency petition is filed. Next, let me tell you, the Supreme Court held that its judgment in Pankaj Bansal versus Union of India, which had held that enforcement directorate must furnish the grounds of arrest to the accused in writing, does not apply retrospectively. A bench comprising Justices Bela M. Trivedi and Satish Chandra Sharma held that non-furnishing of grounds of arrest till the date of pronouncement in Pankaj Bansal cannot be held to be illegal. 
Further, the bench made certain observations which had the effect of diluting Pankaj Bansal dictum. It stated that the accused need not be informed of the grounds of the arrest in writing at the time of the arrest and they need not be furnished within 24 hours. But the accused must be orally told about the grounds at the time of arrest. In the case titled State of Punjab versus Principal Secretary to the Governor of Punjab, the Supreme Court held that if a governor decides to withhold assent to a bill, then he has to return the bill to the legislature for reconsideration. This clarification by the court is important because Article 200 of the Constitution does not expressly state what should be the next course of action after a governor withholds assent for a bill. Coming to the 100th important verdict from the top court, a bench led by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachud and comprising Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra allowed the union government to extend by six months the term of Chief Secretary of the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi, Naresh Kumar. The court held that the central government has the power to appoint the chief secretary of the Delhi government and that such power includes the power to extend the term of superannuating officer. The court clarified that its views were prima facie in nature subject to the adjudication by the constitution bench on the validity of centre's services law. Thank you for watching. With this, we come to the end of the last part of this special series on 100 important Supreme Court judgments from 2023. I hope you found our exploration of these significant Supreme Court judgments insightful and enriching. Do tell us about your views in the comment section below. Stay tuned with Live Law for more such updates.